the lovely Kimberly Parker Green Thank you, darling. is on Berg Vivant today with Bare Bones Productions. You will yes. be approaching the iconic role of Nurse Ratched. The big nurse. In One Flew Over the Cuckoo's yes, Nest. Yes, sir. Now, I, the, I have to share this with folks, and we will layer this over the video. I mean, it, it was worth it alone for you to get this kind of press. I mean, this is amazing. Honestly, <laughs> I don't think anyone is happier than my four-year-old son. She's so <laughs> wicked. But, you know, I, I, I want to talk to you today about this classic mm -hmm. character who, by mm -hmm. the way, I was reading up on her. I think a few years ago there was a poll for a film magazine, and they rated her the number two villainous of all time, yes. second to like the Wicked Witch of the West. Yes. Now, I got to tell you, it's been easily 15 years since I have seen a production of this play mm -hmm. or the film. And I don't remember her being that awful. Like, I kind of was like, oh, well, that's reasonable behavior in that situation. Well, and in that time period. Yeah. Certainly. Um, yes, it's been very interesting trying to kind of commingle my current personal association with feminism and mental health with this play that is some um, different material from a completely different time. Mm -hmm. um, so we really, we explored everything. And Melissa's been very gentle, but also firm in helping me to find that balance and when to lean into the kind of um, Disney villainess <laughs> <laughs> aspect of it and um, how to incorporate how to incorporate uh, just the sense of, of rightness, right? Because you can't judge your character. So mm. it's been important for, for, for me to figure out when she's uh, resorting to putting walls up to protect herself, really. Right, right. She is the only woman in this world, and it must have cost her a great deal to get where she is, especially yeah. with knowing that no one respects her. I mean, you have to have an iron fist. but. Yeah, she's very iconic. So for those who haven't, aren't familiar with it at all, I mean, just to put it simply, she is the nurse in charge of a ward of um, uh, patients with a, you know, varying degrees of uh, mental disability. Is that fair yes. to say? Yes, yeah. She is the head nurse. She's a psychiatric nurse. She's been trained and um, supposedly working at the top of her field for 20 years. And we have... Um, all types of gentlemen that are in the ward. And what's interesting about the play is that many of them are self-committed mm -hmm. uh, or, or they're, you know, they're not committed. They are there by choice. Um, and that to me speaks a great deal to how far we have come, even though we have much further to go in creating a community wherein people with depression or bipolar yeah. issues, manic depression can sort of now be supported. Whereas in 1960, they would have needed to be somewhere safe right um and we have some lovely actors and yeah the full range um, um manic depression bipolar hallucinations yep. brought on by experimental drugs in the war so it's been um sobering but also kind of encouraging you know so am i not completely alone then that i i'm not the only one that's not really ever seen her as a villain no but then again, I'm the kind of guy that watches whatever happened to Baby Jane like it's a comedy. So, uh, um, you know, it's it's cool for me because I'm finally transitioning into my type, which uh, is evil, uh, maniacal, domineering, bitch, villainous. Yes. Congratulations, yes. you've Thank made you it. Thank you so much. Cheers. <laughs> At I think last. It's yes, time. It's yes, time yes, for yes. Toast. I'll drink to that. Um, <laughs> it was hard for me when I was younger because I've got the blonde hair and the big eyes, but I was never really an ingenue. So, I had a rough go of it when I was younger and now that I get to play women it's really fruitful and fun for me um, and I don't view her as a villain I can't but even in the sense of the play I think that that's the way the men view her because mm. of the hierarchy um, and also the blatant misogyny <laughs> yeah that is in the script and that we all know about I get to exercise some of my inside feelings in the voice that I can't use mm -hmm. with my children. Yeah. Because <laughs> you can't talk to well, kids. Well, yeah, you, you, like you said, step into it, and then, you know, right, at right. the end of the day, whew. Bring, Yeah, bring it, it all in. Is it therapy? Absolutely. I mean, I personally also have a real therapist because all art can't be therapy. Um, the lines can get blurred really yeah, easily. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's awesome to get to come and behave inappropriately and scream and yell and thrash i mean that's that's a gift actors get away with a lot yes we do Wait. did you read mindy kaling's book no what is it called the, actually the second one the first one is, is is everybody hanging out with me and then the second one i can't the name escapes me it'll come to me in like five minutes and i'll interrupt you saying something else <laughs> i promise but um 
She talks about how actors are the only people who are completely allowed to cheat on their husbands and wives. And, you know, like in the context of a script, that's completely safe. And she kind of breaks the myth of, you know, Hollywood actors are always saying, oh, you don't feel anything. And it's so awkward. And she says, that's not true. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is fun to make out on stage. <laughs> I personally never get cast in the makey outy roles. That's my husband, but... <laughs> so your husband is an actor as well. Of course, yes. <laughs> Do you guys compete? Oh, ever? yeah. We fight all the time. No. <laughs> no, I mean, it's... We kind of... Our paths don't cross very often oh, in terms of No, we need projects. to get a company to, like, cast you both together. But then, like, who's going to be at home, you know? Like, you kind of need... Well, we'd have to be one of those, like, very open-minded Grotowski theaters where, like, Grotowski, the kids yeah. can come and, like, be in the space. <laughs> I, I don't ever want to be the type of person that only does things that are easy. Right. I think when you get to that point, it's kind of like, well, what's the point of being alive, right. you know? So what is, has been the most difficult part of this role for you that's challenged you the most? Finding a way to justify masking her emotional response, not only to the fury she feels when McMurphy disrupts the system, but to, the, to what eventually happens with Billy Bibbit. That is, it's heartbreaking, and I'm working with the lovely Nick Lahane, who has just been, he's one of those guys that, for me, you do a lot of shows and sometimes you're like, you're gonna be a forever friend, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I hope, I hope, Nick. Um, but but I, I, it's been such a treat and he's just heartbreaking and it's really hard to detach and refocus that as, as a means of kind of punishing McMurphy. That's been really hard for me. Yeah. Um, so I hope I do it right. Well, you're in great company. I mean, as, as you yeah. said, you know, Nick Lahane, Derek Walton, Wally Jamal, Mark Tier John Gresh. I mean, this is an Everybody. all-star cast. It Erica is, Strasberg. It is. The young Megan. Th this is, Megan Yanko has yes. been just kicking ass, double cast. Leandro Kano. Awesome. Randy Kovitz. I yeah. Mean, everybody is in it. Everybody this. is in it. It's a veritable <laughs> Pittsburgh theater smorgasbord. Right. The show runs through May 7th here at the New Hazlet. Yep. So we're wishing you well. And you. Uh, on that note, uh, Berg Vivant has a very special gift for you, Nurse Ratched. This That's is a nice. first aid kit. Oh. Okay, from Berg Vivant, and as such, of course, it has the essentials, um, oh. vodka and gin. And from now on, I think just slap this down as your headshot and I, say no more. Like, you don't even need a resume. This, the, the crown of thorns, well, too, is such an amazing touch. It is amazing, and I will say, CGI, it's Photoshop, it was you mean you really didn't, They really didn't put barbed wire around? I kind of wanted them to, but that's a personal thing that should probably not be in the end. <laughs> and then if we're lucky yeah. enough, yeah. we can have a little pocket version. Teeny tiny scary Kim. <laughs> we, can, we can have uh, Nurse Ratchet in our wallets, you know, for, we just, if we need that morning jolt, you know, just yeah. open up your yeah. wallet, like, oh, there, that's well, what they do. You know what I joked? I was like, this is going to go on my um, syllabus as a teacher from now on, just like this. And it'll be like, come to class. Right.